All right, next up, we've got, uh, I don't even, I don't know how to, is it Maxim? Maxim? Well, special, thanks, what's happening here? There we go. Uh, Maxim, I think, could be wrong, student, 3D artist, uh, Paris, France, wants to be a character artist. So right off the bat, this portfolio is very, very early in my opinion. Like, I think right now you're trying to push a, a look that uh, you, you're seeing in your head. This this first piece, um, Photoshop only, digital painting, it's a year ago. So anything uh, while you're a student that's a year old, I, if you're as long as you're making a lot of work, totally get that like transition stuff off of your portfolio and into a blog. Um, as new things appear because like there's a there's a bit of like let's see here okay we'll start here so we've got this which is which is not bad like obviously you're you're paying attention to scale and understanding of um features of a character there's a few odd things but i'm not a character artist so i'm not even gonna try and pinpoint those things now this looks like so this was four months ago made in blender rendered rendered in cycles so the rendered in cycles, uh, most people won't care to know about. And the made in Blender, you can put down here. Um, this also, to me, my personal view on it is not, it's not finished yet. Like it looks like you, you've you got the initial block out and the idea and the, these uh, these cables in the back here are the beginnings of your, your art pass on it. Um, yeah, so like, and then I would definitely like uh, Brutalist, I know is like a, a style or like a, yeah, it's a style, an architectural Brutalist design. Um, definitely check your references and make sure that you're following your references to the detail. Um, continuing to move forward, so we've got Golem 2. So this looks like you're, you've pushed your details a little bit further in a different uh, design while still going in the Brutalist route. I'm not sure why this one is here, but then this one is here. Because like when you look at your portfolio in the beginning, it actually looks like the same scene, but then when you go in here and then go down here, you actually see something else. Now this one uh, is definitely, in my opinion, I think is stronger than this one. Um, but I think it's still suffering from a very low poly look. I know Brutalist can be very like hard angular uh, in design, but um, it's very basic in its geometric forms uh, from like an early 3D artist level. Like these details uh, will have this look in say a sculpture, right? But they won't, um, it's hard to, man, how do you explain that? Breaking away from that, that look of geometry while st still being realistic geometric is a very difficult thing to pull off. Um, if you're going this low poly with stuff, you could totally bevel every edge that's on a major edge just to try and get away from the hard edge of uh, 3D geometry and to kind of bring yourself a little bit close to that realistic uh, geometric look. So this one's them in a uh, the statues are a bit more of a context, so that's pretty cool. Um, Design-wise, I think a lot of this you're still pulling from from your mind. If there if there is reference, I would love to like uh, talk with you about how we how you split up those details and how pieces are actually fitting together. Like this bottom piece here being so dark makes it actually look like it's unlit. So this is Unreal Engine as well. So like figuring out. Yeah, see these hard edges here? Like, if you bevel those, you can force the normals on that, and that hard edge can still be a hard edge, but have, like, a nice kind of uh, lighting wrapping around the edge effect instead of, like, a hard line. Because uh, you still want a hard line, but you don't want the, the low-poly geometric uh, stuff. Um, let's see what else we got here. I mean, I see where you're going with the stuff. It's just understanding architecturally how things are put together uh, and then executing on the construction of those 
is something that it looks like you're still working on. So this one, there's actually a whole lot of stuff going on. Cyber Utopia. So overall, this this is a pretty interesting idea because you have basically it looks like uh, like the hub space where all things pass by, people walking or trains or high speed railways or um, advertisements everywhere, clear holographic screens. Uh, let's see how. So one thing that you're really going to want to look at is how do you how do you separate out all the noise so that you can see what you're what you've built, right? So there's things like um, adding fog to help like separate the planes. So like maybe this building back here, everything behind that train is kind of further back because of the fog. And then like um, other things like these these details here. I'm not even sure where those, those must be coming from the rails. See, from this angle, I'm not sure if the, that must be the top. And that's the top of the rail. And then there's the, where's the train at? See, the train's right there. It's, it's a very difficult scene to make sense of with all of the details happening. Man, the song I'm listening to is terrible. I can't can't do it. Um, yeah, lighting and materials need work the most. I, I agree with that. The other thing too is like compositionally, like if this is all centered up, this the center of this statue needs to be like right here. It's off by just a little bit. But I mean, you're definitely what you're doing is you're you're thinking about scale and you're using the skills that you have so far and you're just like scaling up and like building everything around you. Whereas like I would definitely focus on the fundamental uh, facets of, of 3D art for now, because like doing something this big is just not attainable usually by a student just because it's, it's just too much to build like, dude, I've been working on that temple scene for almost two years. And of course, I'm like talking about it all the time on stream and we're turning it into a lesson instead of like uh, me just building it. But uh, it's still, that's like two years. And that's someone who's been in games for 10 years. <laughs> Think about it. Of my 10 years in games, I've been working on that scene for two. That's brutal. Uh, we'll be moving on soon on that, I, I promise. Um, but yeah, like I would take this lamp Design it out, make it look the way that you're expecting it to look, and then you've got a prop. And that prop, you can make, if you can make that prop look good, then you move on to like the next prop and the next one. And then when you can start making those look good, you look, make little scenes and then you just keep, you keep pushing until you basically have built the library of the assets for this type of theme that you're looking at. And then you just start putting them together. And when you're missing things like um, like this rail track, you can build that rail track. Maybe that rail track you use uh, Unreal Engine's spline tool, and then you're only making a chunk of it. That way you, you don't have to model the whole thing out. Stuff like that. So this this one is, uh, I think this is the last one. Let me look. No, no, this is halfway through. Okay, so this, this is the last one in the series, I think. Uh, this detail here, you're definitely starting to push more in your details the size of the detail is quite large and definitely need to scale it down. And then like how, like, I don't know if you're going for a metal and wet, but it looks like a wet surface right now. Uh, so watch out for those. And then again, try and soften those edges up even at this scale. Uh, Cause I like right now, I'm not sure what the material is. Make rooms, not cities. Yeah, no, it's a good, uh, Early on, that's a good. It's a good call. Like this is also this is a, this is small enough that you could you could go for it, right? So then you're only making this one piece, and then uh, this central piece here, and then you just dupe that around four times, and you're good to go. This is pretty cool. How this folds back. It's pretty. This is pretty rad. I almost wonder if like there'd be like a cockpit in here that's in like a sphere. And then based on like which way it's spinning and rotating, this sphere is always 
kind of right side up for the for the pilot. So design wise, this is pretty cool. I think it just needs uh, it needs that detail pass on like solidifying what the materials are. Like this hard edge here, I'm not sure why that's there. If that's a smoothing issue or if that's intended. If it's intended, just adding like one or two bolts to help sell that it's two separate pieces is key. Presentation wise looks pretty cool as well. But definitely uh, you gotta start getting away from the, the constraints of the geometry you're building. Per, per Beck. Uh, yeah, we're doing portfolio reviews. If you wanna, uh, if you want to do, want to have your portfolio reviewed, there's a, a link. Uh, I'll have one of the moderators help you out. But yeah, get on the list. Where I'm trying to blast through these so I can catch up because there's a bunch of them. <laughs> so and as I can, as we're going through this, it's it's pretty obvious you're getting. While there's still work to be done, you're getting better at 3D. Like this area here, like is no longer having the low poly issues. You're starting to model the smaller details. You're thinking about the details. This is um, interesting here because like this is basically an area of rest and this is high frequency. So knowing that like this is an area of rest as well, right? If let's say this is, this area is finished. Uh, and then this is like a medium with like some smaller details. And then this is like high frequency. So what you want your ratio to be is you want it to be like 70-30 where 70% 70 of the asset is I rest. Um, and then 30% is high frequency so you focus in those high frequency details and if you look at it here like if you cut the panel count in the middle here to maybe like a third of what it is i think squinting i think you're basically at the 70 30. like the high frequency is basically just here and here and then everything else is kind of like uh chilled out right it's let letting your eyes chill now with designing things like spaceships and jets and spacecrafts and stuff like that, front view, if you look at a lot of things from the front view, uh, these type of vehicles, um, the front view is always very busy. So that rule can be, uh, that rule can be um, broken in this sense, just because it's function versus design, right? Functionally, it needs all these vents and airflow channels in order to keep everything cool and running and to help it like maneuver in a, in a good way. So as long as those make sense and those details are where they're supposed to be, you can get away with that, uh, with breaking that rule. No, oh, see this stuff. This is, uh, so this, while it's still a lot to do, it's a lot of work. Do you see this is like so much easier for your eyes to read? So like these details here, like there's other ways to get that look without it being so contrasty, right? Like you could do those patterns in the roughness. You could have the range just slightly closer to the dark value so that it's the detail is still there, but it's not grabbing your eye. But yeah, there's definitely uh, you're definitely getting better with how many edges you have here, or like how like this is a pretty focal asset, right? So like I would uh, I would spend the geometry and just make sure that that looks round enough. Project Utopia on Real Engine scene. See, this is another thing you you won't need uh you don't need this here just because you'll have it down here oh that's interesting oh that's cool too so i really like all the details that you're doing but you're only like you're basically taking like so when i when i built a game in the past at a studio um we we go through this phase like a block out phase this is now my favorite stream thanks man <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 
So you go through a phase where you block out everything for the game. It's its own asset and you block that out and then you're like, all right, that's what it is. Here's like a document that explains what it is. Here's the dimensions of it, the size. Uh, here's the reference that it goes with. And then that gets sent to outsourcing or that gets sent to your props team. Now, with that said, basically you're at the blockout stage. This is what a game looks like before, man, this sounds super harsh, but it is not intended to be. This is what a game looks like before, in a perfect world, before the art pass. Like you're like, build the scene out, you know where everything's gonna be, you know all the parts that you need, and then you actually execute on the art and then replace all of the assets with the new art. And then you're like, everything's already in place, so it's just swapping, updating the art, and then it's good to go. So like this, this shot right here, you could do this bottom image alone and just get all of those, those materials and the modeling all like to polished, finished state. And then like some nice like, like cityscape in the background here with the train passing by. Sick portfolio. That's all you would need. You wouldn't need to build the whole scene. You just need this. You don't need the whole city. So and then, then it looks like you're moving on to vehicles. And uh, maybe it's either like Ferrari's blueprint and a lot of references. So one key thing that's probably making this look really good is the fact that you had a lot of references and blueprints. But because you have the blueprints and references, it says that there's still a lot to work, a lot of work to do. Corrections and better renders. So like the corrections, that's because you have references that you know that, that you need those corrections. So this is like, honestly, this is your best model you've made so far and you're getting better and better, which is super exciting to see. Um, I will, I will emphasize it strongly. Blueprints and references are like freaking key to everything. Even if you're gonna make up something, it has to start, like you're making up something based on something that has existed before that you've seen or are referencing to, even if it's in your mind. So it is imperative to have reference, so that way you have something to cross check with, and then you'll be able to identify uh, where issues are occurring very, very early on allowing you to just like crush it and make amazing art from the get-go. And the more you do that, the more you'll get better at anticipating where details need to be because every time you're looking at reference, you're always seeing the same, oh, there's supposed to be a bolt there or oh, there's supposed to be a vent there every time. And when it gets to that point, you start looking at reference less and less and being able to freehand create your own designs that fit within the reality of real life. Like that is, that's the dream, right? That's where everyone wants to be. Um, but yeah, I'll say again, this looks freaking. this is really good compared to your, your other stuff. Like you definitely are, you're leveling up as time is going on. Now with the vehicle being the last one, let me, let me go back here. Looking at all of these, I think, uh, for sure I would start shaving off like, uh, maybe from here, I would take all of these and put it in a blog and link that if you if you ever get pro they have a blog in here you can just put them in there cuz it's always nice to go back and look at your stuff and see where you've where you've come from but like when you when you graduate school and you're looking for a job you don't want like your your older first stuff to show up right to uh, future employers um, and then the next thing i would say is you're you're probably getting to a point where it's it's time to decide like what you want to be like do you want to be a character artist do you want to be an environment artist so like this is character art right this is character slash concept this is uh maybe environment art maybe like we would send that to a character art team and they would build it and then give it back to environment art uh this is like world building so you're not really building the art you're just kind of placing it around um vehicle design vehicles vehicles environment building, uh, prop creation as well in here. So like figuring out if you want to be a props artist, character artist, uh, a vehicle artist, or an environment artist. You have many to choose from. Find the one that works for you. And by works for you, I mean is super, super fun. Because when it's really fun, it never feels like work. Even under the most stressful conditions, 
imagine if it was super stressful and you didn't like what you're doing. <laughs> Anywho, this actually has been one of the better portfolios to review because there's a lot of stuff to talk about and improve on. And I, dude, I look forward to seeing, seeing more of your, your, your growth as you, as you keep going. I'm going to do two, por two more portfolios, believe it. Uh, I will be right back and we will get on to those guys.